people don't think, hey, let's go to Cincinnati and enjoy some high quality wine. But this region kind of spanning out from Cincinnati was covered in vineyards during the mid 1800s. We were producing more wine here than anywhere else in the country. They are like woolly. This wine history was lost. Why is that? I don't know. Uh, but what I do know is that there's a legacy here that was worth exploring. There was also some beautiful wine that I had had from here that made me a believer. I think a lot of people think you just like kick your legs up and, and drink wine. It's not like that at all. I'm Kate McDonald, and I'm the owner and winemaker here at Skeleton Root. These are the fermenters. So this has got basically two red wines. They've been fermenting on the skins for about a week, and so they're going to get pressed. Skeleton Root really was born kind of in the mission to resurrect a lot of these American heritage grape varieties that really were kind of filling these hillsides um, throughout Cincinnati in the mid-1800s. So I was living out on the West Coast. I was in the wine world out there when I became aware of the wine heritage here in Cincinnati by way of actually a book. This one's where it started, for sure. And, and it really just became an obsession almost from there. There was an entire section on Cincinnati wine history and it was largely rooted kind of in the history of Nicholas Longworth. Longworth was principally making dry, still white Catawba and Catawba bubbly. Those were the two wines that put this country on the map from a wine perspective. Neither of those wines were available commercially in any of my travels. So it really was just kind of a mission to, to recreate something that wasn't available that I couldn't try. Uh, and now we have it. You can see how gorgeous the color is when it's young. I wish they stayed that way. I was aware of Catawba as long as I've known about wine. I knew it as pink, sweet Catawba. It was what I would maybe drink, you know, when I was maybe not of age. But it's a shame because there's this beautiful nuanced wine in there. I love it. I also love a lot of our other kind of native friends too. Isabella, Ives, Norton, they just like bleed these just amazing colors, which is always really fun. It's like a color show every day. Do not let me forget to label this. To make wine that connects with a place, which is really what wine is. It's a gateway to a place. That meant so much to me. Welcome to St. Clair. Good to see you Good again. Good to see you. You know, I was born and raised here, but I couldn't get out of here fast enough. High tech grape sampling. Grapes in the colander. I didn't intend to go back to Cincinnati, but these wines were beautiful, and they were from Southwest Ohio, and they rivaled any wines I've had anywhere in the world. Okay. I just put it in Kate here. ate one. I'm not contributing to the sample pile. <laughs> this legacy that we have that's storied and beautiful and also beautiful in the glass too. I mean, it brought me home, but it wasn't intended to. I don't, I don't know if that makes any sense, so. The most exciting thing to me is just that moment when you have it in the glass and you're just like, wow, like, this is, this is right. This is what it should be. This is where it should be. And that you made it to that point. At some point, Bordeaux wasn't common knowledge. At some point, Oregon Pinot Noir was not common knowledge. The same can be true for Cincinnati. I can't say that we have the answers, but that is the journey. There's a lot of hustle and that does get tiring sometimes, but there's nothing I would rather be doing. 
what's the fun in going in and making something that you already know how it's going to turn out.